The Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, made history Saturday, becoming the first country to land unmanned rovers on an asteroid. Launched in 2014, the goal is to bring back a sample from beneath the surface of the REUGA asteroid 280, 280 kilometers from Earth. As part of the mission, they want to see if an asteroid could have brought water to Earth. This week, two hopping rovers from the mission sent back images. Some say this mission is a first step towards the future business of asteroid mining. Here to discuss is Tom Risen, reporter at Aerospace America. Tom, thanks for joining us. Yes, thank you. Yes, uh, I spoke with in a separate interview with uh, JAXA President Hiroshi Yamakawa. He's very excited about the scientific uh, exploration to see if uh, asteroids brought organic matter or water molecules to prehistoric Earth. But he also knows that the techniques being used by the Hayabusa 2 spacecraft, which is orbiting Ryuga right now, could be used for asteroid mining one day. Tom, I thought the Han Solo and Empire Strikes Back taught us to never land on an asteroid. Well, uh, Jax has tried this before. They sent the Hayabusa 1 to an asteroid uh, 2005. It got there. And what and happened? They, they tried to send a, a very similar rover to the asteroid, and it flew off into space. So, you know, the second time's a charm. They sent two of them this time. It worked. But this is not easy because the, the gravity on the asteroid is very weak. Okay, so talk about the, the long-term promise of asteroid mining. I mean, I, I know the moon has also talked about as a potential hub to stop and, and uh, mine fuel for other missions to Mars and beyond. So why would you want to land on an asteroid? Well, the first thing you have to realize about space economics is it costs a lot of money to take anything into space. Uh, a figure often cited by Na is uh, $10,000 per pound to launch anything out of Earth's atmosphere. Now, NASA and co space companies are working to reduce that number, but you should still assume you're going to spend 10 grand to, per pound to get anything into space. Water can get really heavy, air can get really heavy, fuel can get really heavy. You can get all of those from water on the moon or water on asteroids. Uh, NASA has confirmed there is water ice in the shadows of craters along the polar regions of the moon. Uh, people have been talking about water ice within asteroids. So they're going to try to get those resources while they're already out of Earth's atmosphere. It'll save them a lot of money of shipping things back and forth in space. So do asteroids have advantages for this kind of uh, fuel manufacturing that, that the moon does not? Well, the moon is often talked about, like uh, Jeff Bezos, founder of rocket manufacturer Blue Origin, says he wants to send a lander to the moon by 2023. He's spoken about eventually uh, turning water from the moon into rocket fuel because you have hydrogen, you have oxygen, you can synthesize that. Uh, asteroids, there are companies like Deep Space Industries or Planetary Resources, which have spoken about that, it's still a while, a, a while away. And you got to remember, a lot of the asteroids are between Earth and Mars in that giant asteroid belt. And we still need to get humans to Mars. So the, the, these rovers are, are Japanese. Talk a little bit about why Japan has kind of led the effort here in the exploration uh, of, uh, of asteroid mining. Well, I think this is a sign of how international the international space exploration is heating up. I think because you know, India sent a probe to the moon in 2008, which NASA, which scientists used to confirm that there's water on, you know, water ice at the polar regions. They had this spacecraft in 2008. Uh, JAXA sent a spacecraft to an asteroid a decade ago. I think that, uh, yeah, JAXA is very interested in, uh, you know, they founded their agency by merging the different aerospace corporations within Japan. So they're trying to do big things. They're also, yeah, they have. Uh, they have this Bepi Colombo probe going to Mercury soon, too, so they're, they're stepping up. Uh, we've been talking about Elon Musk with regards to Tesla earlier today on the show, but he's also, of course, the CEO of SpaceX. If you're Elon and you're drawing up your plans to visit Mars one day, you know, what do you take from uh, today's news about this Japanese accomplishment? Well, uh, he signed um, this uh, Japan startup, uh, iSpace, approached uh, SpaceX about launching a lunar lander mission uh, in 2021 and 2020 on Falcon 9 rockets. So SpaceX is involved. SpaceX is offering launch services. And that's, you have to remember, the two big ways to make money off space right now are rockets and satellites. Asteroid mining could be a future business, but by providing launch services, SpaceX is, is in the game. Yeah, interesting to note the, uh, the, the, the passenger on the forthcoming uh, SpaceX orbital mission is also Japanese. Yes, I, I asked about that um, on the iSpace. Uh, the, the, they announced the iSpace deal with SpaceX, and they're just all very happy. It was interesting, this, this billionaire who founded the, the Zozo clothing retail site approached SpaceX. So people are coming to SpaceX 
with these, they're interested. They know that SpaceX is offering launch services and they say, hey, I had this big daring plan to go to space. Let's do this. So let, let me ask you one last question about this Jackson mission. So we've got these incredible images. You know, what, what do we still have to learn from the samples that it will bring back? There's a lot that can be learned. Uh, they haven't collected a subsurface sample before. They're going to release a blasting cap in orbit around the asteroid. The Hayabusa 2 is going to get out of the way, and it's going to create a crater. It's going to shoot a projectile at this asteroid and create a crater and collect the first subsurface sample from an asteroid. So there's a lot they can learn, see if there's water molecules, if there's organic compounds. That would tell us a lot about what an asteroid is made of and what it's like. And then we can plan from there.